two. Uh, so we can start the meeting. This is the June 20th, 2017 meeting of the North Dam Transportation and Parking Commission. My name is Ryan O'Donnell. I'm the chair of the commission. Uh, let me know the audio and video recording of these proceedings, and I'd like to do a round of introductions for the benefit of the public, um, starting with our vice chair. Engineer Chair, Ward for City Commissioner. Jody Casper, Police Chief. Dave Pomeranz, Director of Central Services. Krista Burnett, Citizen. Rick Tyson, Director of Public Center. Donald Scalia, Director of Public Works. Jamie Fisher, Citizen. Maggie Shan, DPW. Nancy Forrestal, Assistant City Collector. Bill Capital, DPW. Okay. Oh, that's well enough for Shan. Okay. <laughs> Thank you very much. Uh, we'll start with a period of public comment like we do at every meeting. It's an opportunity for the members of the public to speak on any issue you wish. Um, you'll note that there are several other agenda items farther down on, on the agenda. For example, I asked uh, residents of Federal Street to come today. And you're certainly welcome to wait until that time to speak or speak both times. But during the public comment section, we often talk about issues that are not posted on the agendas. So just be aware that we can't discuss those issues. This is your time to share your thoughts um, with us. So with that, um, are there any members of the public who like to? Uh, Zane, and if you would give your name and address for the record. Sure, uh, Zane Lamelski. I live at 20 Hampton Avenue in Northampton. Uh, I'm also the, the co-founder of a nonprofit website called trainsinthevalley.org. Um, even though this is a transportation committee, I don't think it gets talked about or hear about rail very often, so I'm here to talk about rail. Uh, and I, I know Gina Louise's committee about downtown, there was a, a lot of interest in commuter rail. So basically, my basic message is to all of you and to, and I'm going to pass this out because this, this has the uh, URL for the website. Um, it's also an advocacy group that we, fo that we formed. Uh, and it was launched about a year ago. Uh, and there's tremendous information about anything rail in the valley. Passenger freight, existing, what's coming up, what's planned. Um, the, uh, this is a very busy week for rail. There's a lot going on. I don't know if, how many of you know this, but uh, Union Station Springfield is opening this weekend. There's a lot of events around that. Uh, yesterday, Senator Lesser had a series of events along the proposed east-west corridor, uh, ending, in, and in, ending in Springfield, and I guess there was a big turnout. Uh, tonight, there's a special workshop on Union Station at a branch library in Springfield. Um, there's, there's just a lot going on. Uh, over the past few months, there were many opportunities for citizens to give input. Unfortunately, those formal things had passed, common conversations, one was held in Springfield, and it had the largest uh, attendance of any of the six in the Commonwealth. And it was all about, we want passenger trail trains. We want more passenger trains. Everybody who talks to us about this in Northampton says, when, am I, when are we going to get more trains? When are we going to be able to commute to New York City and back in a day? So my answer to that is, it depends on how many citizens let their elected officials know that that's what they want. So that's the message I'm here to tell you today. On our website, there's a, there's a tab at the end called Get Involved, where there's a tremendous amount of information on how to do that, who to talk to. Um, I would say most of our local uh, elected officials are very in favor of it, but they could use support and backup. The, the state rep, uh, Rosenberg, is very in favor of it. I mean, the state senators, the state reps, um, the mayor, of course, here. Uh, mayors up and down the line. The problem is the governor. He's not in favor of anything out here, and so uh, he needs to hear from citizens. So that's my that's my message, and uh, I think that Gina Luis encouraged us to also uh, make a presentation at the uh, city council meeting. Maybe we should be on the agenda then, so that there could be questions. Thank you very much. Thank you. Would you like the extras or? Put them in the uh, I would say uh, people should take them and okay. you know Thank you. pass them out. Thank you very much. Thank you. Is there any other public comment? I'm Penny Guys, and we just heard about a grand, wonderful idea, and I'm going to talk to you about a tiny little specific intersection. We have some handouts so you can follow along. You've seen this.
three years ago, Wayne came to our neighborhood and asked us to put dots on a map about where we thought the most problematic place in town in our, in our little village is, other than Leeds. And he chose one of those spots that had a lot of dots <coughs> to do something about, and we're all glad it's a dangerous intersection. But probably twice as many dots were put on the intersection I'm talking about. And we are still concerned about that. People whose kids crossed this street 20 years ago are still concerned about the danger to children crossing here. It has not shown up in studies because there, is, there are no stop signs there and there is no crosswalk there, typical places that cause one to pay attention. But if you will look at the back of this thing I handed out, there's a map. And you can see the red circle is where I am talking about. It's a fairly small neighborhood. Where the yellow is, is where school kids go, either to school or to catch the bus. And up where that the kind of lopsided double circle is, is the new Beaver Brook development where lots and lots of kids are moving in. Those kids, as well as from this entire area map, all come to school, almost all come to school, down Grove Avenue and down the driveway where I live. If you're familiar with Leeds, this is the old uh, Demick Mansion. It's condos now. And they come down our driveway and then the neighbor's driveway to the school. It's not a public road, but it's used like a public way for bicyclists and pedestrians, especially school children. When you come up, if you see where Florence Street is, there where it intersects with maybe Front Street, it's hard to know exactly where Florence and Front, one begins and one ends, but that's uphill. And there's a woods in between the street and that green line. It's uphill, and you turn a corner, and the cars cannot see where people are crossing. And the people crossing cannot see the cars coming up the hill. So we have children, as well as bicyclists and adults, coming across there twice a day during the school year, and it's dangerous. We all worry about it. I sat out and did my own informal little traffic survey the other day. And that's I included it in there in your handout. But you can see that we have about, in that hour, I just did it for an hour, the hour that we're worried about when kids are crossing, we got 50 some vehicles going through and about half as many people going through. This doesn't go on all day. You know, the kids are only there twice a day. So we are asking for your help in figuring out what to do to make this intersection safer. It's already a narrow street. There's already a curve. This typical traffic coming things probably aren't going to change much. The problem is that people can't see around that corner. We've had lots of ideas in the neighborhood as we've discussed it. And I went, the, the official copy has signatures from the neighborhood. I think my signature makes number 48. And people have crossed off on their little petition ideas about what to do and added other ideas. One person wouldn't even sign it because he said, oh, these little things aren't going to matter unless we totally rebuild the intersection. But you and I know that's not going to happen in our lifetime. But surely there are some simple things that can be done to make our children safer as they cross that intersection. Maybe it's a raised crosswalk. Maybe it's a mirror, a couple mirrors so people can see around the corner. Maybe it's a sign. I, I went to pick the brains of the 
Pedestrian and Bicycle Committee, and they had some clever ideas. One of them was, well, they won't stop for pedestrians, but you know they stop for salamanders, just put up a salamander crossing sign. <laughs> so, you know, we had lots of creative ideas. We had a good conversation. But the reality is, you people are the ones who have the expertise to know what will make our children safer there. So I have an official one with all the signatures. Would you like me to leave it with you or drop it off at the DPW? If you leave it with us, we can scan it and distribute it to the commission. Don't mind. So here's all the signatures. Thank you. And you and I can talk by email and phone, and maybe we can put this on future agenda for a better discussion. Great. Thank, Thank you very you. much. Appreciate it. Is there any other member of the public elected, please? Yeah. And again, if you give your name and address to the record. Sure. Um, my name is Sandy Mandel, and I um, uh, live on 64 Liberty Street in Bay State. And um, I am not speaking on behalf of the Bay State Village Association today. I know that there's a meeting coming up to talk about traffic calming. And maybe it's with you, Ryan, I'm not sure. Um, and I'm going to be away the day that the meeting is happening. And I promised people that if I had an opportunity, I would come here to voice uh, to voice my concern and, and be a part of the mix. So I have lived in Bay State for about 10 years now and was really happy when the first traffic calming was, uh, was put in for Riverside Drive. I, I'm sure you all know that um, that speed there is a very serious problem. And the problem kind of morphs, has morphed over time. I mean, like now coming down Liberty Street, um, down towards Riverside Drive, when, when cars actually park on Riverside Drive, you have to kind of edge out and edge out and edge out and try to see as far as you can. Because the cars come so fast that you may not have, I mean, it's like there's all types of adaptation that happens. But the bottom line is, is that speed is a, is a serious problem. I know that we submitted something in 2008 and that it was considered, it was accepted as a proposal and it went to the top of the list and then nothing. And then we had the, um, the traffic where people were driving across the wire to get a, a number of how many cars were going and we had a temporary speed bumps there and then nothing happened. And I consider myself a very optimistic person who's pretty deeply in, uh, engaged with the democratic process. And it's been very disconcerting that nothing's happened on Riverside Drive. And here we are nine years later. And, um, and I'm just hoping that something can happen before we have a tragedy like they had in their neighborhood. Um, it is just a matter of time. And I just feel like we're lucky that it hasn't happened on Riverside Drive because the speeding, I mean, I live up towards the top of the hill and, the, and you can just, it's, it's literally this drag racing that's going on and there's also just the, the ordinary speeding. I mean, there's, there's a combination. I feel like we're an accident waiting to happen and I know that people are very concerned about this and they're all gonna be talking about this at a, at a more organized forum, but since I couldn't be there, I thought I better since I am this concerned about it, I thought I'd better just come down before before uh, going away and the fact that I was going to miss that meeting. But it, this is familiar to everybody, right? You know, this is I mean, the speeding on Riverside Drive and, and the traffic calm proposals and the process. Um, so I'm hoping that we can somehow, without having to have a tragedy or having to turn up the volume um, really loud, I hope we can have something happen sometime soon. And that's it. Thank well, you thanks. so much. And, and Ms. Mandel. Yes. Um, you call me Sandy. Sandy, we might we are going to have a, a general update from the DPW. And so while we can't discuss the, the actual issue, maybe it would be appropriate for the DPW to um, explain, you know, what we're doing on Riverside to give you a, a brief update. And the other thing is, I'm not sure what what other meeting you're. I think it's a neighborhood meeting and that okay. people were going to be coming together and we're, I can okay. check back if, if in fact this is, um, sure. I can let you know if it's something that you need to know about. But I know that there's a, a meeting that's going to be happening where people are going to be coming together and sharing their concerns okay. and, and bringing them eventually to all of you again. But I thought, I'm not going to be here and I need to 
I need to do what I need to do so that if something terrible happens, I don't. I can at least say to myself, you did what you could. I appreciate it. Yeah, I just didn't know about the meeting you were describing. Pardon me? I said I appreciate that. I just didn't know about the meeting you were Oh, absolutely. So, sure. So thank you. Okay. Thank you all. Okay. Take care now. Anyone else like to? Yes, sir. <coughs> I'm Michael Di Pasquale, uh, 55 Woodland Avenue. I'm a licensed architect and licensed urban designer. And I teach urban design at UMass. And uh, not everybody, but especially urban designers, it seems these days, are trying to uh, <coughs> encourage many modes of transportation in our cities and towns, certainly Northampton. I think we've gone a long way to uh, make it easier and safer, really, for bicyclists and pedestrians and uh, we're dealing like a lot of cities are with uh, a new uh, really era of mixed modes of transportation in our cities and towns um, and Northampton has done a lot but we can still do more and I guess that's my message today I read the papers and uh, know that uh, since I've lived in Northampton for about 10 years there's been several uh, horrific fatalities uh, involving bicycles and pedestrians and, and cars. Um, so I'm here today because uh, I don't have a solution and I think there's a range of ways to address this issue. Uh, but I know that you represent a range of departments and, and uh, um, a, a range of constituents, I guess, too. So I want to just appeal to you or to talk about uh, one thing that I'm interested in, especially, is reducing the speed limit. And I know it's something that you're talking about already, so I want to give my support to that idea. I know that um, other cities are either thinking about it or have already done it. Some are larger, some are smaller than Northampton. But I think uh, there are many benefits to reducing the speed limit. Uh, slowing people down with drivers is one thing, but it sends a strong message that uh, Northampton is serious about making our streets and sidewalks and places for people, making them safe places. And uh, we are going to continue in this direction, I think, of encouraging people to walk and to bike. And I think we need to be prepared and be proactive uh, and address it in a range of ways. So that's, I think, and I think that's one big way that we can do it. And uh, I guess I just want to finish by saying, you know, people are impatient or people are talking about making su suggestions nine, ten years ago. I'd like to use the analogy of snow removal. I, th I think about this uh, during the winter time. you know. Um, <clears throat> as soon as it starts snowing, uh, we mobilize uh, our uh, city uh, DPW, I guess, to get out there and to uh, get rid of the snow. And when uh, it keeps snowing, we don't stop plowing. We seem to keep plowing. And uh, we seem to find money. Well, even when we're way over our budget, sometimes twice as much, the, the, the state puts in money, or we find the money. Uh, I think this is a serious problem, as serious as taking, if not more serious, than getting the snow off the streets. And I think uh, if pe people should need to wait 10 years, or even one year. So I encourage you to look at the, uh, lower the speed limit, and look at a range of things that you can do. I think uh, we need an overall approach where every uh, intersection, every sidewalk really is looked at and a plan is in place. There may be one in the, in the works already. Uh, but I think it requires a ratcheting up the attention we pay to this. And I'm hoping since you're all here, they represent a diverse group of people, that you can think of ways to collaborate to make that happen. Thanks. Thank you very much. Anyone else? Uh, I'll be brief. Uh, well, actually, I might not be. My name is Anne Hennessy. I'm the member of 186 Federal Street in Florence. And I'm also a member of the school committee in Washington. Um, I was going to speak later, but I feel like the issues that we're talking about affect all of Northampton. And I'll say that as a school committee member, the most calls and letters and kind of pullover on the streets that I get is about not High Five Fridays, <laughs> but about um, school bus walking, biking to school, and it's safety. It's not about quality of life. That's important, I think. But it's a panic that I hear from parents. Um, and people feel very disempowered. Like, I don't know what I can do. How can we do this? Joy Winnie um, from transportation here at the school committee has been lovely. And we've had to change bus stops. 
um, and the base states on the agenda, and that's a, a profound issue without any sidewalks, uh, a speed limit on Federal Street of 30, of, I'm sorry, 25 with a sidewalk, and then of 20, and then of 30 with a, without a sidewalk. We have just strange um, patterns and traffic, traffic patterns here that it's really difficult to actually define bus stops. So as one parent recently called and said, you know, my, my daughter's part of a group of six walking to school on Bay State to Jackson Street. And I feel from Federal Street crossing Riverside that I'm putting her life in danger because of the way the speed is on Federal Street and coming in from Riverside. The speed on Federal Street. Um, so I would agree with Mr. DePesquale, right? Um, yeah. That just lowering the speed limit. It's again, it's not about quality of life. It's really about safety. Um, throw out, a, I'll, I'd say, 50 people this year um, contacted just me, Ward Five, about traffic issues, going to school, coming from school, and then just regular kids on bikes. But I think it's. I, I don't. I know you've heard from people. It is. Um, it's all over the community, South Street, um, Bridge Road. So I implore you, this is, um, I just implore you to do something. Lower the speed limit, do cityscape changes. I know we don't have a lot of money, I know that profoundly, but um, these bright minds here, putting your heads together, we can figure something out. Thank you. Thank you very much. Any other public comment? Okay. Um, well, we'll get into the agenda. And the first item is the approval of minutes from our previous meetings of May 16th and May 26th. Um, is there a motion to approve these minutes? I'll second. Okay, so Council Chair makes the motion to approve and seconded by Chief Casper. I'll note that there was one change that was has been submitted by DPW. It's minor as on the May 26 minutes it corrects the person who <coughs> made and seconded the motion to adjourn and that was made by Council Shara and seconded by Chief Gasper. Apparently very active members. Very yeah. <laughs> uh, so with those changes understood, are there any other comments or amendments to the minutes? Any other discussion? In all in favor of the minutes? We say aye. 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 Any opposed? Any abstentions? Okay. Minutes are approved. Thank you. Um, now let's go into reports from departments and subcommittees. First, let me just make a, a technical announcement. Um, per the administrative code that establishes this commission uh, from the mayor, um, we have to elect the chair and vice chair every year um, at the first regular meeting after July 1st. So this is an announcement that there will be an election of officers for this commission um, at least by the next meeting aware of that. Are there updates from the DPW that you could share? Yes. Um, all right, I'll run through some construction projects first. Um, our roadway improvements contract um, is going to be um, Ryan Road and Park Hill Road for this year. I'm going to be milling overlaid and microsurfaced. Um, the bid opening was on June 1st and the contract was awarded to Palmer Paving. So work will begin later this summer, and the value of the contract is about $750,000. Crack ceiling contract, bids will be opened on June 28th. We anticipate spending about $110,000 this year. Various streets and school parking lots will be crack sealed, um, including the Ryan Road School, Bridge Street School, High School Stadium parking lot. Day Avenue. In conjunction with water line replacement, Day Avenue will be reclaimed and new sidewalks and curbs will be installed. Work has already begun and will be completed later this year. Audubon Road, along with water and drainage improvements, the section from Reservoir Road to House Number 200 will be reclaimed. 600 foot section near Kennedy Road will also be reclaimed. The contract was awarded to Borges Construction. Work has begun, is planned to be completed this year. Hankley Street. Hinkley Street reconstruction project involves full depth reconstruction in conjunction with the replacement of water, sewer, and drain lines. New sidewalks will also be installed along with a raised crosswalk at the intersection with Nonatuck Street. Contract was awarded to Ludlow Construction a little bit under $3 million. Work is expected to start in August. 
sidewalk inventory. Data collection for the remaining streets is complete and will need to be quality checked. The consultant is continuing their work on the report and we expect that imminently. Um, now just a, a couple of uh, general traffic calming updates. Riverside Drive. Uh, traffic counts were taken in 2009 and 2011. Due to the time that has elapsed, we believe that additional data should be collected. So traffic counters are going to be reinstalled um, later this summer, and we will look at what the counts are and then issue a, a, an engineering recommendation in conjunction with that. And Cardinal Way, I just have some kind of preliminary information. So traffic counters were installed between August 17th, 2016 and August 25th, 2016. <coughs> Average daily traffic ranged between 701 and 722 vehicles per day. The 85th percentile speed was 36 miles an hour at the straight alignment south of where the houses are built up and 28 miles an hour at the curve. So a couple of notes on this. The 85th percentile is the speed at which 85% of motorists are traveling, the, the speed at which 85% of motorists are traveling at or below. So this is a national standard for assessing speed. Um, the, pre, the prima facie speed limit, because it is unposted on Cardinal Way, is considered to be 40 miles an hour at the straight alignment and 30 miles an hour at the curb. So as I said, the 85th percentile speed was 36 miles an hour at the straight alignment with a prima facie speed limit of 40 and 28 miles an hour at the curb with a prima facie speed limit of, of 30 miles an hour. So we will have an engineering recommendation based on this data later this summer. Great, thank you so much. Are there any questions uh, of the director from the commission? Um, well, 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 planning is planning of it. Just a few quick updates. Um, so the Pleasant City Complete Streets project is almost done. We should be done by the end of July, except for some punch list items. Um, and one reason we've been trying to move quickly on the Complete Streets piece, so it, it, it's a big budget, but it's a portion of $400,000 in Complete Streets grant. Uh, the next round of Complete Streets grants are due in September. We want to finish this. We're not eligible as long as we know we're the grant. So we want to finish this so we can apply for that piece. Um, we have, we're waiting for a final uh, contract with the state for the $1.3 million regional bike share program. Um, we're expecting any day and we're expecting to go to bid for the program probably sometime in early July. Um, so next to April, we hope to actually open the, the bike share. Um, Leonard Street Route 9, which you've heard before, uh, our, our consultant told us they're almost at 25% designs. So that's the point we're starting. <coughs> have designed to share with DPW and with the public on that project on the board. Um, we still do, we had a public hearing in North King Street Roundabout. We're doing the analysis that came out of the public hearing, and hopefully that'll be done for the next month or so. Um, and then finally, we, we have a grant, it's a public health grant, that's letting us buy some pedestrian counters. So you all know the DPW does all these counts for, for vehicles. We're trying to make sure we have some data on pedestrian counts. We don't have a lot of that here. Two permanent counters that are mounted out there that don't move that help us sort of get trends over time. And then one portable counter is supposed to arrive next couple of days. Thank you very much. Questions or points of information? Okay. Um, I'd like to move some items out of order since we have members of the public here for those things. Um, I'd like to move item C to the top. Um, actually, if you don't mind, Maybe I can move Nonatuck Street up first, since uh, we have kind of a follow-up on that. I know there's members of Nonatuck Street here as well. Um, and so before we get the members of the public, could I ask our DPW director to kind of give us where we stand on traffic coming on Nonatuck Street? Sure, so the installation of the two speed humps is, uh, I would say, about 80% complete at this time. Um, we have to make uh, some minor modifications to them and then uh, strike them so that they are more visible. Um, we have, it, it's kind of this fine line we have to walk, you know, you have like fresh blacktop and you can't really paint it when it's too fresh and we've been kind of fighting the weather. So um, anyway, I anticipate that this work will be complete at, at the end of the week. Um, we, we've got the locations marked with barrels for right now um, so that they are visible to motorists. Um, it, we've gotten a lot of uh, 
feedback on, on the speed humps. Uh, people are, um, have uh, a lot of comments about them. Um, and what I would say is that we uh, followed the process and the engineering recommendation and uh, the installation is, will be complete by the end of the week. And thank you for moving that so expeditiously on, on that, that construction. Um, any comments from the commission to start on the topic of Nantuck Street? If not, we'll go to members of the public on this topic. Hey everybody, I'm Alexander Papuchas, the guy who normally shows up here a lot, and uh, thanks for having me again. Hello Bay State people, I'm super psyched to see you all here. Um, the first thing that I wanted to say is thank you. Thank you very much. Can I just ask your address please? Oh of course, 113 Nantuck. Thank you. Um, so the first thing that I want to say is thank you. Thank you to the DPW for acting so swiftly and also for being so responsive. I, I've noticed being in this process for two and a half years, watching the process kind of take shape in terms of figuring out how to be in touch with the community. Everybody was notified about the installation of the humps. People get back to us really quickly. We feel supported. Thank you. Um, I know you get a lot of comments from a guy who, who lives two houses from the speed humps. I would say that if we put counters out right now, the volume of traffic that goes down that stretch of Nonatuck has diminished substantially. The number of people who speed has diminished substantially. And although there are people who are learning the hard way about these speed bumps, um, I don't think people make that mistake twice. Actually, I've sat out there a lot and seen the same person who gets bumped the first time come back and go very slowly. So from one guy's perspective and other neighbors that I've talked to at great length, it's working, which is awesome. Um, so I, I'm just incredibly excited and thankful. The reason why I'm here today um, is to recognize and honor the work that's been done and now to look forward with you all with some really concrete requests and suggestions based on the <coughs> conversations I've been having and the work that's already been done. Um, so for this next bunch of comments, I just wanna, I'm focusing my, my comments on the stretch from Baker Hill at the top of the rise down through this intersection, the South Main intersection, which we all know is wonky and weird. Um, my understanding right now is that the DPW has been tasked to do an assessment of the viability of a four-way stop sign at Federal Street. And so on that note, I wanna just bring our voice of encouragement that we're really excited about that and we look forward and would love to hear more about the time frame and the process that the DPW with all that's on your plate has to go through to get to that place. So that's the first comment. Um, the second thing that I, I understand right now is that with the installation of a raised crosswalk and the reality that, well, because the raised crosswalk is actually not a traffic calming measure on its own, um, and the fact that people accelerate off of the speed hump towards Baker Hill and then down the road, that the consideration and the recommendation of the DPW, or excuse me, of the Transportation Committee to ask the DPW to study the viability of radar speed signs. I believe that with or without the inclusion of four-way stop at South Main, a radar speed sign positioned before Baker Hill and before the descent, and it is a, a traffic counting measure, would remind people of their speeds and slow them down as they approach that eventual raised crosswalk, which will um, make people safer crossing the street. And on the other side, approaching the south main intersection coming uphill from the high school, I think strategically that could be a really solid and sound location for a radar speed sign. So, so to cut through that, my request in this meeting is that the Transportation Committee authorize the DPW to, um, to study the viability of placing those radar speed signs in those locations in partnership with the four-way stop assessment and the raised crosswalk. I wanna add that, we, that the community, the Nantuck Association, the Elm Association knows that radar speed signs are expensive. We don't know where the budget stands. And if that were viable and possible, we would as a community do a community fundraiser to help support, um, we don't know how much we could raise, but at least to, to contribute to the acquisition of those speed signs to show how invested and serious we are in this moving forward. Um, so I think that's what I wanted to say. The other thing that I guess I wanted to say is that, that it's been very cool and it's emerging that we have this, we are beginning to create a partnership for obvious reasons with Bay State Association and that these intersections at Hinkley 
and at South Main really affect both communities. And so we are looking in a, in a spirit of collaboration to work with the town in, in hopefully in a short amount of time to address these very unsafe and critical locations. And from my perspective, with the exception of whatever work that could be done, and we're going we're actually engaged with the city right now about tree planting efforts between that, um, North Maple and Corticelli and along our corridor, it feels to me like if a four-way stop went in, if radar speed signs went in, coupled with that um, raised crosswalk, traffic speeds and volume on Nottatuck, we, we would have essentially calmed the central corridor and, and people would not be able to speed up. And we would have successfully created a model. You all would have been part of creating a model um, that we can use in other locations. If you can calm Nonatuck Elm Street, which you're doing, um, we can calm pretty much any street in this town, I believe. So just in summary, request, direct request for this committee to grant, to authorize DPW to study the viability of radar speed signs uh, approaching uh, that hill in both directions and if we could get a, a sense of an update of where the stop sign evaluation stands um, and the time frame and how we can support those efforts that would be really appreciated okay um, so thank well, you thank you thank you for your comments and thank you for letting us know your impressions and i'm glad to hear yeah. that the community that that part of the city feels like these traffic calming efforts are paying off yes that's that's really rewarding for me to hear um, one quick question. Did Please. you say that you were concerned the raised crosswalk would not have a traffic calming effect? Or did that miss your... I am not an expert. Defer to the experts. Oh, My understanding in this are. navigation is that a raised crosswalk is not considered on its own a traffic calming effort because, or measure, because if you're, you're trying to, to put a raised crosswalk as a way of slowing people down mm -hmm. at the expense of pedestrian safety, that that's... I'm not saying you, okay. you oh, guys, no. that's not what I meant. Okay. What I'm sure. saying is, in, a, in my read of the literature uh -huh. across the nation, in terms of best practices, uh, that's coupled with other traffic calming measures to make sure that you, people don't get hit in the crosswalk, obviously. So by itself, it's not a standalone traffic calming measure. And I'm sure that the, the director will back me on that. Oh, sure, no, not, yeah. not in any way criticism. I wanted to clear yeah. it up. Yes. You might want to look at North Street, for example. Yes. All the raised, uh, all the crosswalks there are actually also speed bumps essentially oh cool um, and the other point to clear up is this yes. commission is, is advisory as yes. you know so we can't explicitly authorize or, or direct oh, okay. the DPW to do anything that may be kind of a linguistic okay like technical thing to know but it's something that I'm glad that the, the police department put out the temporary yeah. radar yes uh, I'm glad to hear about the positive reception it's had and it's something that I think we can talk about going forward awesome. um, without making promises either way. Of course. You, you highlight our budget constraints and so yeah. forth. So. Mr. O'Donnell, Ryan, can I, can I ask? You call me Ryan. Ryan, since, since you clarified that, my understanding yeah. was that the, the traffic commission or the, the committee needed to authorize that assessment. So is it, is it the domain of the DPW to make that assessment on their own? How can we best advocate for that to happen? But specifically radar? Specifically, the, the speed oh. sign, radar signs in those locations. Well, it's funny. It, it, I'll, I'll tell you the truth. It's actually it's not been historically part of our uh, the tools that we use for traffic calming. Mm -hmm. We've mostly talked about things that narrow the road or raise the road. Yep. So it's sort of new. Um, I wouldn't think that we would be able to install radar electronic radar signs all across the city in every place where they might be useful. So. Right. To be honest with you, it's kind of an open, open discussion about how we deal with those, how we use that technology, to be honest with you. We have two mobile uh, electronic radar signs in the city, and so they move around. Yeah. Um, and I don't believe we have any permanent ones except for the one that Smith College put out on Elm Street. Right? So I guess it's very much kind of an evolving discussion. Okay. Yeah. Great. Um, now, the four-way stop. Maybe we can discuss that, but first I'll ask if there's other people who want to talk about Nonatuck Street or the intersection of Federal and Nonatuck Street. And we, then we have the whole issue of Federal Street as well, but which we'll spend plenty of time on. But if not, maybe if we can, is, is there any update on four-way stop issue? Yes, yeah, so we've, we've, um, we've looked into this and uh, so traffic control devices are governed by 
the MUTCD, which stands for the Manual and Uniform Traffic Control Devices. And additionally, these traffic control devices, the installation of them and use of them, um, is also governed by the Massachusetts Amendment to this same manual. So that's the guide that we have to go by when we're looking at what we're going to install and where. So it, it's important to note that the purpose of a stop sign, to, it, the, the purpose of the stop sign is to designate right of way to meet vehicles making conflicting movements. It is not intended to control speed or for traffic calming measures or to forestall pedestrian rear end or turning movement accidents. Um, so with that being said, there's two criteria that must be met in order for a four-way stop sign to be installed. And this is not like an and or thing, this is an and and thing. So we need to see that the volume of traffic on the intersecting roads is approximately equal, which requires a study. And the second criteria is that it, there have to have been five or more accidents in a 12 month period that could have been corrected by a multi-way stop. So both of these criteria must be met in order for an installation of a four-way stop sign. So the, the first thing that the DPW does in a case like this is, is we request the crash data because the volumes would need to be studied by like an outside consultant if we were gonna kind of look at, look at this um, the intersection um, you know, in a more comprehensive way. So we need to make sure that before we take the step to actually hire a design firm to come in and study this, that the crash data has, is supporting that. So we asked the police department for this data um, and in 2016, there were two crashes at this intersection. The driver hit a deer while driving eastbound on Nonatuck Street, and the second crash was a driver entered the intersection from Federal Street and was struck by a vehicle heading eastbound on Nonatuck. So one of those crashes would apply to the, the crash criteria, but again, the crash criteria was five or more crashes. So interestingly, if you go back to 2006, there were 13 accidents at or near this intersection. Um, but then we have to look at, well, are people turning or what were they doing when they crashed? And several of these are lost control of a vehicle due to ice, hit a utility pole, lost control of a vehicle due to ice, hit a mailbox, vehicle struck parked trailer attached to a pickup truck at 596 Elm Street swerve to avoid animal, hit a utility pole, lost control of vehicle, hit a utility pole. So the, the, the accident data is not supporting the installation of a four-way stop at this location. And because we are governed by the MUTCD and the Massachusetts amendments to this manual, at this time a multi-way stop is not warranted at this location. So I think the perception is um, that it is, but the data is showing um, it, that the crash is the crash volume is not there. Thank you. And point of clarification: you mean there have been 16 crashes since 2006? 13 since 2006. 13. Correct. Not, not in 2006, there were 13 crashes, but Correct. over a roughly 10-year period, there's been less than two. Or year. Correct. And in 2016, there were two, and one was the deer incident. Other other comments on that from the commission? So, that's a quick so I mean, I understand that it doesn't meet that the crash criteria, but is there a reason why we couldn't do the volume? If if it did, why couldn't we? Why couldn't the DPW do the volume study? This is uh, typically when you're looking at actually installing a traffic control device. Uh, an outside engineering firm typically gets involved in that. Um, just due to engineering concerns. Engineering and design concerns is what I would say. Are there other exceptions at all? Or it's kind of like this is a policy, the state has adopted, they apply to cities and towns? Um, I, you know, I can't speak to what's yeah. gone on in the past, but um, it, it, at this point, um, under my leadership, I would say that the DPW yeah. would would engage the services of an outside consultant if we were going to undertake something like this. Well, certainly there, there's no exceptions to the, uh, the warrants you described. Correct. About what we have to show. And those warrants would be met, for example, 
at the four-way stop at Jackson Street and Prospect and Woodlawn. They were they were met, and we were four-way stop there. I think it's one of I don't know how many four-way stops we have in the city. Not terribly many. Um, it's funny anecdotally. I have a friend who actually I was talking to about this, and she's from New York. And she said, "Well, in New York, there's there's stop signs at every." every neighborhood intersection, even if it's major or minor. And I don't know, it's just kind of an anecdote. But I guess it's the case that different jurisdictions adopt different standards for, for stop signs, but we're bound to ours. I'll also advanced. clarify as far as the volume goes. So an average of at least 300 vehicles per hour for any eight hours entering from the major roadway uh, and an average of 200 units per hour for the same eight hours from the minor approach. So those are the volume right. requirements for a four-way stop. Which we haven't looked at yet because, it, as you said, it's an and, Correct. not an or. It's not and so if it fails or. one, you would go to the expense of the other. Okay. Other well, question here. So, so it sounds like a four-way stop is a no-go. Like, so that's fine, but there's any number of other traffic calming devices we could use that way. That you consider? I would say it's not the end of the conversation about that section of Federal Street, I would think, or Federal and not in general. Um, and I think that is a conversation generally that should continue, you know, as the second part to the traffic calming measures that are being built in the next couple of weeks. Specifically, I'm, I'm not sure what they would be, but I guess that's what we're here to talk about. Yeah, yeah, I and mean, I don't know if they would be either, but yeah. I mean, you know, the chief is telling us that uh, stop signs aren't considered a traffic calming device to begin with, um, and what we're looking for is traffic calming, so, right. so be it. I mean, I mean I yep. Comments from the commission or the public? Michael. Uh, this is a great view that you just should <laughs> I need to stand there if I stand here. So totally up to you. We, we can be uh, so more informal. I don't know if I agree that they're not traffic cops. I mean, they may not technically be, and maybe there's an outmoded way of thinking of them as not being traffic coming, but the four-way stop at Prospect Woodlawn, whatever else those streets are called, I don't know, Woodlawn, has had an enormous traffic coming effect, I think. I, that was playing when I still had kids crossing the street, like they're driving cars now. Another thing, but I the combination of uh, narrowing the uh, the net when you get to the intersection and the stop sign made a huge difference. I would tell my kids never cross that street because there was no stop sign there, and people might stop for you, but then another car could come around them. That's been completely that danger has been eliminated with the combination of an island and stop sign. So I'm not sure I agree that they're not. Maybe technically they're not considered, but the way that intersection was redesigned, the uh, outcome is a traffic calming approach, and it includes four-way steps. The other thing is, uh, when I was talking up there before, I want to encourage you to come up with a new mindset. You know, we can quote um, regulations all we, you know, forever. Yes, I deal with them all the time. Uh, first of all, there's ways around the regulations, but also. Um, there may be other, there may be new regulations or uh, new approaches that uh, address some of those outdated laws. So uh, I think um, we can't just approach these as traffic problems and traffic counts <coughs> and crashes. You know, that's the worst thing to depend on crashes to justify traffic coming. Uh, so I'm encouraging everyone <coughs> around this table to have a fresh look because we're talking about traffic calming and uh, creative, progressive approaches to achieve it, uh, not the old ways. Thank you very much. I, I me give you an example by way of agreeing with you. I recently wrote an ordinance to establish new school zones in the city. I think created about four of them. Actually, one of them was um, across from the Y because children across Prospect to get oh, to Jackson. Yeah. But if you look at the state law, it's very strange because by state law, you can't establish a school zone for a school that has um, a grade below one. And you can't establish it in a grade above 12. So for whatever reason, 
State law says no school zones near Northampton High School. I think that makes no sense. And I totally agree with you that we need to try and innovate and when possible, maybe even seek exceptions. But I think we need to begin with a survey of the regulations. And I think that's, that's what you're hearing is a discussion of are we able to just do this tomorrow? I think the answer is no. And that's unfortunate, but I think you're also hearing that we want to keep exploring those creative approaches yeah, because that's what all we can do. So thank you, Alex and thank you. I, I'm going to throw a, a little bit of a wrench in things, and, and it's coming from just getting this information. Okay. But the MUTCD, is that, what it, is that correct? Um, manual says that there, and they list in terms of options, other criteria that may be considered in an engineering study include locations where a road user after stopping cannot see conflicting traffic, and is not able to negotiate the intersection unless conflicting cross traffic is also required to stop. And that would um, paint a pretty accurate picture of that intersection at Federal Street because the markings coming off of South Main and Federal, you cannot clearly see oncoming or cross traffic. So I would encourage us to, you know, based on all these comments, to see if we can really put focused energy and effort. If it's a, if we think it's viable to, and that there's maybe an exception here, if the chief feels that way, if there's another strategy that we can use to, to think about it. I mean. We have the, that's the place where the sidewalk crosses street, the street. Um, there is no crosswalk there for the high school students. Could we put neck downs in there um, with the stop signs? Um, neck downs are, are, are like you see on Elm Street where, this, where the, the curb actually extends to give a safe area for folks to cross the street. It, it also narrows the street. Neck down could be a perfect example of something that would be effective there other markings to actually eliminate the issue of people not being able to see oncoming traffic. What can we do coming out of this meeting to make this happen, to move this forward, is my question. I'm, I'm super excited about it because I think we can do it. It's low hanging fruit, let's make it happen. Well, uh, I'm not sure we'll come out of the meeting with the design for the intersection, but the things that you're raising, I think we can explore, I'm happy to do that. Awesome. And if in your research, Maybe you could look up the Massachusetts amendments to the manual on uniform traffic control devices. <laughs> oh, really? Yeah, I mean, I we're looking it up. Yes. What, 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 is, what exceptions does, does the Massachusetts version have what you described in the federal standards? That'd be interesting, interesting to know. Okay. Um, so, any other? Please. Hi, sorry. Um, I live on that intersection. My name's Laura um, on Elm Street, and I live on that intersection. And I hear people honking and screeching on a daily basis. So I know, I know that the crashes make a difference, but the near misses, like, can't, you, can't you just put a mirror there or some, something? You know, everybody's like trimming their bushes, but it doesn't do anything, really. It's so sketchy. And, and it's true, you can't even get to South Main. Is that the street, South Main? South Main. Yeah. South Main. So I can't, you know, my kids want to walk up to Florence to get an ice cream. I don't trust them just crossing that street in front of our house, you know? Anyway. No, thank you. I'm, I'm all in favor of improvements we can make. But mm. Even a mirror. I mean, how much is a mirror? I'm not, you well, know. That's an your question. You would, that's come up before, and the city doesn't have a policy on, on mirrors. Um, maybe it should. We were going to buy one. <laughs> we were all going to chip in and just buy one. But we bought the traffic cones. Yeah, we bought the traffic cones on the Federal Street. So we're, we're in the purchasing <laughs> business to try to calm our traffic on Federal. Uh -huh. I don't so. think it's the expense of the mirror. I just think we don't have a. I think all the mirrors you see are like private mirrors that people yeah. Which maybe are good, but the city, I don't think none of them are city mirrors. Anyway, okay. Um, any comments or reaction to this so far? I have a, just a quick question. Yeah. Are the standards the same for a three-way stop versus a four-way? Is there something that's special about a four-way? If we were trying to stop the traffic that was coming up from Mountain Talk down now, because I'm guessing, based on, Laura, your experience here at that intersection, that most of the near misses are vehicles that are coming from up on Mountain Talk over on Elm. Is that accurate? I would say it's really sketchy coming, like, leaving federal. Yeah, if you're crossing over, but yeah. who's almost Who's almost hitting you? People coming from Nanatuck or yeah. people coming people from coming up Elm? From Elm and Both directions? Mostly from Nanatuck. That's the, yeah, so it, 
That, it seems like it would be. Yeah, it seems like it would be, and the, the you can't see as well up there either. We right. can see a lot longer trajectory down yeah. the other way. And you have to really pull out to see past the bushes. Right. Are the standards the same for three-way stops? I don't know the answer to that. We can check it out. Just to clarify this visibility issue, are we talking because of the geographic contours of the area, or are we talking shrubs and tree limbs? It might be it's, ge it's geographic. I mean, the, the yeah. streets are sort of mismatched, yeah. mis -ma mismatched so and then you have to down. actually get halfway into the intersection right. before you can see whether or not you can turn right or left, and by then, you're in fairly high danger. Would that problem still exist if there was, if there was a stop sign? You'd still have to edge out. Well, we would imagine that the cars wouldn't be careening down. Yeah, no, it's not a crisis um, just, just to explore. Or up out, you know, down on a tuck or up out. They would certainly, they would certainly um, slow, I mean, I know it's not traffic calming technically, but it would certainly stop those cars, which are, you know, hitting their, they're hitting their speeds. But not if there were just one stop sign. You would need four or at least three. Well, I think what the chief is raising is actually really interesting. Even mm -hmm. if there were, I don't want to undercut, but even if there were two stops, you know, on Elm and Nonatuck, mm -hmm. um, and not on South Main and Federal, um, you know, it could be a, you know, if it could get done without um, without any difficulties, that could be a huge. Problem. Okay. One of the things that the folks just spoke to, I think, it, and I, I know it for sure on South Main is that South Main comes like this and hits um, Nonatuck and, and Elm Street here. The, the stop line for the person coming to South Main to approach that intersection is 10 feet back, I'm guessing, 10 feet back from the proper intersection itself. So if I'm looking, if I'm here and I want to turn right on Nonatuck Street, I cannot see the traffic because the house is blocking me. So even just, I don't know if it's a safety issue, but if you brought up that stop line, it would give somebody line of sight in both directions. But currently, I, I don't know if it's like that for federal, you probably can't actually have a line of sight to, right to up. up the street or and down the street. And also, you don't know if people so it's a if they're edging out. Right. You don't know if they're just taking that corner or if they're going to stop. Right. Right. That's what wonder, we, the honking comes from as well. Okay. Well, I wonder if this is a good time to shift into just the full federal street discussion. Sure. Um, and obviously, it all connects. So. I, is, are there any departmental updates about Federal Street to start with, or do you want to start with members of the public? I can just uh, if you, comment yeah, if you can. very briefly on our preliminary data. Um, we installed traffic counters between September 29, 2016 and October 6, 2016. Average, the average daily traffic was 524 vehicles per day. The 85th percentile speed was 30 to 32 miles an hour, uh, posted at 30 miles an hour. So that is what our preliminary data is showing us. Um, we're continuing to review um, and we'll be issuing an engineering recommendation later this summer. Okay. Other comments on, on that from the public work? Please. Yes. <coughs> Hi there. Um, thanks so much for this opportunity. I'm Joe Comerford. I live at 186 Federal. Um, so, uh, and I've lived there now for about six years. Um, and I want to talk about life on Federal Street between Nonatuck and Riverside. Um, I'm also totally in favor of what the Bay State and Nonatuck vi Village Associations are talking about in terms of a comprehensive approach to Bay Street, which has, I've been living in Bay State now for, since 1999, and life there has changed considerably, and traffic there has increased considerably over the years, and it's become this cut-through neighborhood. In fact, the first time I called the police department um, a couple years ago, before I put, so we put in a, we put in the application in November, two, got coming up on two years, and I called the police department, and the <coughs> really nice person who answered the phone said, oh, you're on federal, it's that cut-through street. Um, super nice, but that was the, that's the understanding about this particular stretch of federal probably the understanding of most of Bay State these days. So this particular stretch of federal um, is super narrow. So maybe the cars aren't exceeding, or the majority of cars aren't exceeding 30 miles per hour. I would posit that 30 miles per hour is a crazy speed limit. It's super narrow. There are blind driveways. Um, there's incredibly poor visibility. There's a nursing home. 
uh, and a bus stop and no sidewalks. So the neighborhood in Federal Street, and we have letters from our daughters talking about how many kids are on uh, Federal Street at this time. There are 11 kids under the age of 11 on Federal Street, and there's always going to be, there's going to be generations of kids raised on that block, but what we have right now on Federal Street is an incredibly dangerous situation. I mean, really, literally, parents say, don't walk on the street, cut through your neighbor's backyards. Because when kids come to the edge of driveways, it's really quite perilous. If two cars are passing each other, the car can come within a foot of the driveway. So a little kid chasing a ball, or even stepping out with a backpack on to go to school and all bundled up, is really facing significant danger. I actually cannot underscore that more. Before Mr. Porter's untimely death at the corner of Hinkley and Nonatuck, the, uh, there was a fatality on, in, on Federal Street. It, actually, the child happened to live in my house where my partner Ann and I were raising our kids two generations back, um, or two families back. When the story goes that the child was playing out in the street, the father came home, was playing with the child and the child's siblings, the mom called them into supper, um, the father turned his back for a second and a car came barreling down and ended that child's life. So that was the sort of the ghost that hung over Federal Street prior to Mr. Porter's death. Uh, and still, actually, we can't have a tax sale without neighbors coming and remembering that child. So, so what I'm trying to convey here is that the situation is critical. Um, Sandy said it's like an accident, you know, it's another tragedy waiting to happen on Riverside. I actually agree with that. It's the same thing on Federal. I can't underscore that more. Elders walking in, you know, with families and pushing wheelchairs are forced off roads. Parents with strollers are like terrified and moving to the side. It's, it's not the way we want to have community. It's not what we should have in terms of community. And I just, I really urge this committee to, to put in significant and comprehensive traffic calming, um, including stop signs and a reduction of speed, which I understand now with state legislation it's allowed, right? You can easily reduce the speed without the, the kind of encumbrance that you've had in the past. And I, I'm <coughs> glad for that. I'm glad you don't have to face that kind of bureaucracy and that you can reduce speed. I'd also love to see speed bumps and I'd love to see other mitigating efforts, all the neighbors would, um, on Federal Street because we really are so concerned. We'd like to think of ourselves as staying there and raising our families, but right now, you know, anyway, I'll, I'll stop. But you understand that, that I'm coming with significant concern. Um, and I thank you for your consideration. Thank you very much. Any other comment? Public? One. Oh, did you have a comment? No, no, I was waiting to oh, say. Oh, you were waiting. Thank you. You were being friendly. I was just being uh, friendly. Any comment from the commission on Federal Street? Um, it sounds like the DBW is in the process of creating a recommendation that's going to come to us this summer. Um, I, this is something that would be available to make public in advance of a future meeting, I would think, so that the public could see it before it comes to this commission and could review it. Um, I would say that's an important thing to make sure occurs. Um, I guess I'm curious about, kind of like to, to take some of what Michael was saying, more, more creative ideas of things that we could look at. You know, for, for example, one of the first things we did at Nantuck Street, not particularly creative, not particularly bold, but um, I think important was paint side lines on the street, which had a psychological narrowing effect. We just heard about the dangers of, of narrow streets. Sometimes when streets are narrower, the federal street is different, different than Nantuck. But sometimes when streets are narrower, that slows traffic. But that didn't take much to paint. Um, so I'd be curious to get more ideas from the public sort of in advance of the DPW's memo so that we can incorporate as many ideas that the neighborhood feels would be helpful into the recommendation. And we're not missing anything. Um, so I guess I would just call, call for any specific ideas in addition to what's already been mentioned. I don't know if, or if that's something we do, can't do today and have to do I think we can do it right now, Ryan. Please, yes. um, Stop signs, traffic counters, Speed bumps. A bus stop sign. Oh, there's no sign saying that there's a kid bus stop there. There's Blinking two. lights. I mean, all of the, I mean, I've read, we've probably all read a number of different traffic, you know, and I don't pretend to be the experts that are sitting around the table, okay. but we, I think we have 
we have a, a many, many ideas um, and many, many options. Sure, we could paint signs, we could put caution, we could put stop words, stop, we could hang banners, I mean, anything okay. to try to get the attention. We could lower that speed limit from 30 to 20. Um, and, you know, the, the, the Federal Street over right now has a 25 mile per hour speed limit. That's what Emma's talking about. And yet our strip of federal with tiny little narrow thing, blind driveways, all the stuff I just mentioned is a 30 mile an hour speed limit. Right there, there's a discrepancy that seems easy to, to comprehend that it like they shouldn't be, this little strip of federal shouldn't be a greater mile per hour speed limit than the one right across. With sidewalks wide, you know, you know good visibility, no bus stops and all that kind of stuff, no nursing home. So like it feels like that's like some parity across would be terrific. Um, plus trying to slow the traffic on non tech which you're doing, and federal, which you're trying to do, would help the cars whizzing in through. Um, that's interesting. On Riverside and non -tech. No, thank you. That's just, so federal street has two different speed limits. Is that a yes. Lot we measured the one at the 30 mile an hour section. And the other both, side is 25. I'm sorry. The other side of federal is 25. The other side is 25. With the sidewalk. Double wide, great mm -hmm. visibility. Okay, and they're both posted. Like yes. There's signs. One technical note is, I believe, if I understand the state legislation, that empowers cities and towns that accept its provision provisions to lower the speed limit where the speed limit is not posted. Because whenever you're driving on a street, you may know this already. Um, there is always a speed limit, even if there's no sign. It's called the prima facie speed limit. And it's based on essentially the density of the neighborhood. So there is state legislation that allows you to lower the speed limit across the entire jurisdiction, wherever uh, it's not posted. But I would have to, I guess I would have to ask the question what we would do when it's when it is posted. Because that is interesting that it, it has two different posts. Could we not repost it? And put well, up a, or, like a new speed limit. <laughs> Sure, know? but we can't decide what the speed limit is. That's that's one thing. For example, this you is interesting. Jump it to the same as the other side. I'm sorry. You could jump it to 25. Well, I wish that I wish that were the case. I I could do that unilaterally. But the state comes in, and if I'm not mistaken, the state mass DOT comes in and decides. So, for example, if you go out on, I'm sorry. That's not what I understand about the new legislation. And I checked this out with Peter Kokot um, prior to coming. My understanding is that it actually frees up your hands, and I'm sure you know more than I do, okay. but that it's not only limited to places where the speed limit is posted, mm. that it does give city government the opportunity to really take liberties to protect and you know, increase the safety and protect pedestrians and bicyclists. Well, I, I, hate, I hate to, to, you know, I guess we'll have to confirm what the yeah. case is. I'm just telling you what my understanding is. Um, but the example I was going to give, if you go on Route 66, almost into West Hampton, the speed limit drops to like a silly limit. I think it might be 25 miles an hour. And you actually get a lot of people who ask us to initiate a process of looking at that again with mass DOT because they, they're concerned, they're concerned there that the speed limit is too low. And I'm not commenting on whether it is or not. But the concern there is people get upset because it's Route 66 and they want to come into town and they feel like there's road rage and so forth. We always say, okay, if you do this, you know, it may go up to 40, you know, you don't know, or 45. So that's always the risk, in my opinion, if it's the case that the city can't do it themselves. Um, and I'm, I'm not saying that means we can't look at it, I'm just providing that, that, that example. Um, but we should look at the state legislation and um, confirm. My, I, I believe it's the case that it's only where it's not posted. But I'm willing to be wrong. Anyway, are there any other other things that we can write down, put into the record here, and think about in advance of a of a recommendation from the DPW so that we get all the all the ideas? Well, I'm, I'm really not familiar with the situation, so I don't want to comment yeah. specifically on it. But I guess I would put somewhere record that uh, we're looking for an approach that uh, doesn't just address one issue. So it's a kind of a more of a all encompassing, or oh, I don't know, can't think of the expression, uh -huh. but a larger view of things. And it relates to um, the design of healthy cities, let's say, where we want to raise children, 
and have people of all ages and all modes coexist. You know, like the bumper sticker. So, uh, and we, we as designers and bureaucrats, uh, sorry, uh, the people that uh, put write laws and things, we have the power to um, reinforce that uh, through design, through laws, uh, through policies. So I would encourage all these situations to be looked at in a more global way with the goal of making a city safe for everybody in all modes. And that's, yes, that's a, it's a huge thing to try to do, but we can start. So um, it's to look at a variety of things that will make our streets and neighborhoods safer. And it's not just about stop signs or uh, laws, but it, it's, a, it's a wider view of it. And, uh, and that, has such, that has benefits for, in so many ways that I think we need to start thinking of, of these areas of our city that way. Yeah, for example, the city, um, <laughs> What's that? Well, well said, and the city, for example, adopted a complete streets policy. Yeah. And if you look at what's happening on Pleasant Street, it's a departure from the past when people didn't think about pedestrians and other modes of transportation at all. That's a good example. So I agree with you. That's very important. Um, I want to make sure I get all the, the ideas out um, before there's an actual recommendation from DPW. So it may be that it can't all come out in this, in this commission, so I encourage everyone. I think I'm pretty sure everyone has my email because yeah. I've, I've gotten a lot of contacts with people. And I'm always happy to. So I would encourage people, if you think of anything, even after this meeting, I hope you share with me. I, I would offer just what, in the spirit of what you asked, sure. has to do with the intersection. Um, the current plan to put, um, currently the sidewalk crosses the street, and, and I'm sorry, I don't remember your name, but you alluded to your, your children not being able to cross there. Laura? Um, but the sidewalk crosses the street there with no, um, with no crosswalk. Mm -hmm. And I know that the plan is currently to, to put the raised crosswalk at Hinckley, mm -hmm. but there's not been any discussion that I've heard about how to safely get people across the street. You, if, if the sidewalk goes in at Hinckley, then wouldn't it make sense to extend the sidewalk down the south side of the street mm -hmm. um, and connect at Federal with the existing sidewalk, which would actually create a safe corridor for young people and others um, traveling that route. As it stands right now, there hasn't been uh, a clear discussion about how to address that concern. And I wonder whether that would be in terms of this holistic approach. I'm thinking about this neighborhood and how to comment that that could be a piece to the puzzle of working to calm that intersection and make it safer, more hospitable, more livable, and address simultaneously begin to address issues on Federal Street. Yes, so that's an important comment. Yeah. Thank you. It's a good idea. Yeah. Um, and I know we've talked about that a little bit in this commission before, yeah. but it's important not to forget about it. Yeah. Okay. And we also have a sidewalk inventory coming out, too. Oh, I'm sorry. Um, Dr. Oskalia, the, the report from the DPW, is that just on the section of federal that the application, the traffic calming application, was um, created for? Or is, is it, does it look at all of Maggie, can you clarify <coughs> that? It'll be going on the application. So between Riverside. Okay. It seems like again, if we're we're sounds like we're trying to talk holistically, globally about this neighborhood. Um, it's it's worth sort of factoring in the entire street and how it it changes, um, and again how it intersects with other with the rest of the streets in the neighborhood. Can I ask a question on process? So Can I ask a question on process and timeline? Yeah. Um, so you'll, the DPW will have a, a recommended plan for federal. Um, based on the data, um, it would seem that folks aren't really exceeding the speed limit, right? Um, if the speed limit is 30 miles an hour, and you said 85% of them are, if the drivers are going, according to your study, 30 to 32 miles an hour, um, that would seem that um, that I, I guess I'm just wondering how you factor that in. So if, if in fact, that, that's the speed limit, and that's an, actually really interesting data. I mean, I think part of our experience on Federal Street is that the street is so narrow 
and that speed is just too high for that street because it feels like a dragway on federal um, and it feels super dangerous. So I guess I'm wondering, with that data, would you be moved? Like, do you, do you have a sense now of whether you'd be moved to do traffic calming? If right now the speed limit is not exceeding, it's like it's not terribly, according to the data, not terribly um, in need of a mediation, right? I guess that's what I'm, I, I'm not saying this very well. If no, the speed limit are. is 30 miles an hour and you say this data is saying that most folks are just doing that speed, it, are we going to hear um, in, however, in the, at the end of the summer that in fact no remediation is necessary because folks are doing the speed limit? Um, is that sort of like what, what's on the horizon? Is that like what you'd have hazard that guess? Well, I, I, I hear your concern. Your concern is that if, if there's no measured speeding, would the recommendation be nothing? Right. And I, I guess, <laughs> well, more briefly, maybe not better, but um, I guess I wouldn't want to speak for the DPW, but I, I would think that many factors get go into this process. And we heard some of the other factors today. Um, and I would, I, would, I would think we shouldn't prejudge the outcome, or my, my hope would be that we don't. Um, so I'm not sure that we could give an answer to that today without doing the full analysis with our traffic engineer and staff at DPW. I mean, is that a fair? Yeah, I can, I can comment a little bit on this and, and just say that, you know, speed is definitely a, a factor for us when we do an engineering study. Um, but we also look at volume, we look right, at, right. you know, how is the roadway striped, what does the signage look like, right. you know, right. what sort of facilities are nearby, so there's many things that we look at um, the, when we're reviewing, you right. know, an entire situation, if you will, and, and, you know, speed is sort of your little hanging fruit, okay, everyone's going 40 miles an hour and a 30, um, you know, if, if that's not the case in this case, which it isn't, the other factors will become more prevalent in our decision making. And if, do you look at volume? I, I noted 524 cars. That seems like a lot. I don't know for a, like a little side street. Um, is that higher than the city average? It's. I mean, it, it varies by by road. You know, so it's it's you know a dead end road, right? And it has you right. know ten but cars. But like a regular or, block. Like a regular block at a, like 20 miles an hour speed limit. It's I, I can't say that it's the same or different or higher or lower. You know we don't collect data on roadways um, typically for these sort of comparative purposes. Um, you know, but if we're looking at it as like this is a cut through versus you know this is um, that people actually live here, it's a commercial area or or whatever. Um, you know, we could look at the volume based on those factors. So I understand your question. There, there I don't have a a, a, a good answer for it. Director Feiden, did you? Oh, I guess two comments. One, of this last thing. One of the things we did talk about this goes back years when we first started doing traffic calming was we weren't necessarily trying to reduce the volume because reducing volume just ends up sending the traffic somewhere else. I mean, frankly, it's not that big a number from a volume standpoint. That's good. Um, yeah. But the other thing I, that I assume you guys will look at as part of this is, it seems like the, the geometry at South Main Street and Nonotuck and at Federal and Nonotuck both are very wide aprons, and so that may be one of the little hand fruits, just sort of I mean, permanently moving it over the way we're doing in Hockman now. But in the short term, it just be narrowing it down so it comes in more of a right angle. Interesting, okay. Michael? I just want to, it sounds like a planner, but I, I, we have two cars in our house. I, I drive a car. But uh, if you ask people what's changed American cities most in the last 100 years, it's the invention, the automobile. So for, for a very long time, automobiles had like run over our cities and, and, and made the cities the way they are today. So I think, uh, of course, now we're trying to take back some of that. So the reason for slowing traffic is that people can, well, there's many reasons, but one of the important ones is you can actually survive it and get hit by a car at a lower speed than a high speed. I'm not saying that's what you want to have happen, but uh, you, have a, you have a chance at 20 miles or 25 or you don't at 40, let's say, or 35. Uh, so um, I guess uh, we've learned that uh, for far too, and this gets back to people that complain about going too slow. 
Well, a person in a big car has an advantage over a pedestrian. So I, my opinion is, for far too long, we let cars kind of do whatever they want. It's time to take some of this back, and policies and design, all these things are, are a small way, really, relatively speaking, of providing, carving out safe spaces for people that aren't in cars. Thank you. And I, I'll note that, Michael, are you still on the Bicycle and Pedestrian Subcommittee of this commission? <laughs> So Michael technically can hear your comments as well about uh, pedestrian and bicycle issues, which are, you're right, important. And I, I think by and large, Northampton has adopted some good best practices, yes, yes, yeah. as you know, but important in this case, too. I'm wearing a different hat today. <laughs> oh, yeah, no, it's totally OK. Any other comments? We could talk for a long time. Um, I want to reiterate that I hope people and others who are not here today, I hope you tell them. Uh, that they should feel free to call or email me um, and that I will do my best to be in touch with the neighbors as the process goes forward, as the DPW's analysis goes forward. I, I think this is something, the message I'd like you to know is that this is important. Every traffic calming application we have, and we have a number of them, and there's a backlog, and we know it. We've made a commitment as a city, and I, in my opinion, the DPW has done an excellent job mm -hmm. in the past year especially at uh, beginning to improve this process, and we're seeing it pay off on non Tuck Street work. So I hope you know that we're committed to this, and I want to, speaking for the whole commission, I want to hear from everyone as we go forward. So, appreciate so thank you for your time coming. Thank you. Yes, thanks. Okay. Um, well, we'll move on to one more agenda item that this commission has, and this is 17.331, an ordinance to amend uh, section 312 dash 110 of the code regarding the roundhouse parking lot. This is relative to parking rules there. Um, is there a motion for a positive recommendation of this in order to get it on the floor for discussion? We have a positive recommendation. Okay, so there's seconds. Councilor Sheriff moves the recommendation, seconded by Director Hopkins. And um, I assume there's a desire to waive reading of, of this. Um, Basically what it's doing is it's uh, striking the rules uh, for the roundhouse parking lot, which are, can be read here, and it's making the entire roundhouse parking lot uh, between Old South Street and New South Street in the first row of parking spaces, making that first row of parking spaces two hours, which is the equivalent of Class 1B parking. Um, and so as you can look out the window and see, uh, there's changes happening in the roundhouse parking lot, and I, what I'm, I'm guessing this is is an attempt from the mayor to make all the rules the same for that section of the parking lot. And um, pretty straightforward. Any questions or discussions on it? No? Okay. Um, all those in favor of the recommendation, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? Any abstentions? Okay. Thank you very much. Is there any new business for today? If not, um, is there a motion to adjourn? Make a motion. Second. Chief makes a motion. Council Chair seconds. All in favor, please say aye. Aye. Any opposed? Thank you very much. Aye.